not be important. Or it could have a massive impact on the standings. We're not going to know until the playoff picture is a little clearer and we're going to start to see some clarity here as FaZe Clan goes up against Black Dragons and the very first ban coming out from BD is going to be Glaz. That's answered by FaZe, banning Nomad. She went unbanned on the clubhouse match between Immortals and Ints. She did not appear at all. So, so far today, we've seen zero Nomad and that will continue through match number three. Really uh, deliberating on this pick here, FaZe. Or ban, I should say. They pick the ban. They are picking their ban. It's going to be smoke. Wow. That's not surprising. No, it's it's going to force Moringa onto another role. You know, most played operator as well, just in general, for Latin America on defense. As he often goes unbanned, you know, you're going to see a lot of Maestro, Mira, and Echo, which means at least one of them will be in play. It'll be Echo gets banned out. So that's a Mira and a Maestro. Mira very useful on organ, as is a Maestro. Very important. But I'd say... I agree with you. The Smoke is a very, very powerful man. You look back at the Rio Finals, it was Mocket, now known as Navi, who banned Smoke against FaZe that forced Moringa onto the Jaeger role. Given that Black Dragons is going to be starting on defense, Moringa's all reliable. Smoke will have to be something else this time around. He's going to go with Legion, a pretty decent operator, to do similar things, though it's not going to have that same plant denial in hand directly. More indirect plant denial with the Goo Mines being in place. The Goo Mines will also perfectly thwart a Finca pick, and I think that's smart of FaZe to be swapping off of the Finca to go with Capital. Mm. Additionally, you look at an Ash, a Sledge, and a Finca on the board. If the Finca doesn't get six picked off, that leaves just the Thatcher and the Habana. You move the Thatcher onto a shield, and Black Dragons might be anticipating a rush strat from FaZe. That's just part of the reason why six pick comes down to a bit of guesswork as to what's going to happen. They also six picked off of a Mute and onto an Ella. They didn't bring a Kaid, which means it's likely Black Dragons are going to be going for an aggressive play on probably Meeting Hall, roaming it at least a little bit. A lot of that denial that you would use, that was almost perfectly synchronized. A lot of the denial that you would use on that main lobby drop down is not there for BD. So yeah, and then with this mirror window, it's confirmed. Black Dragons will be roaming heavily. That's going to be the strategy here for this basement hole. Curious, considering neither Mutant nor Kaid were banned. Though not, Thatcher wasn't either, so the counter is in for FaZe. And I'm sure FaZe would have expected to see a juggle of that drop down. Yeah. No juggle going to happen here for oh. defense and an early pick here for camera. That's not good. That was inside of Kitchen through the front door, it seemed. Very long angle there. That's a mistake from Panico. Yeah. Quite a mistake, actually. Big oof. And it will prove to be very detrimental, I'm sure, in the long run now. Yeah, so you're going to be using one of your, sorry, your only ACOG, mm -hmm. which is very important, especially when it comes to meeting hall. It's a very, uh, you got some long angles that you can challenge there, even from tower onto meeting hall to try and hold on to it as long as possible. And apart from that, it's just, you know, manpower gone. So good job to FaZe getting that early frag, and that's going to open up a lot of this round for them. They've got a lot of information working their way here with these cameras and the uh, dark cams, obviously. But FaZe are fighting back, and a trade. Looks like Moringa on the Mav, Astro on the GDN. Very, very er, er, back and forth trade here, but uh, at the same time, FaZe maintaining their man advantage. And it looks like they downed PZD as he fell. That was a down by cameraman entering into meeting hall, but since PZD made it back, he probably will be recovered. Well, this is dangerous here from the Legion. He's gonna go for it, and he doesn't actually stick it. PZD is still on the ground. No, there you go, he's back up. All right, mirror window dealt with because it was unreinforced. That's curious. It's a very interesting setup from Black Dragons. The C4 is going to get shot out of the air, and Hugzord will put matters into his own hands, pushing on up. He'll get the down through the hatch on Astro, but will now have to rush through asphyxiating bolts. He's only on just one HP, and that nice LMG of Ion will be able to finish him off. It's just Moringa now. It's, I guess you could say every single member of FaZe Clan left alive because Moringa used to be on that roster. He's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna start with one kill on Meeting Hall and possibly try to get back in, but he's gonna have a very difficult task. Oh, a beautiful pre-fire onto Ion, his replacement. You'll see enough time spent on getting Astro up, but Moringa has done some mystical things here on the stairs. Going for the defuse as he pushes on down. He'll win out the fight onto Yuna, where is Astro? You got time working at your disposal. But 
Ash still has an ACOG on one of her guns. And it's in the G36. Astra will finish things off as Moringa comes so close to being able to keep the round for his team, and a beautiful clutch could have been in the works. But it will not be for Black Dragons this time. Diffuser down and almost throwing the round away. FaZe will somehow manage to survive that. Black Dragons probably kicking themselves, digging themselves out of a hole, at least for the time being. It was very close there from Moringa. I mean, when you're playing against your previous, your, your former, pardon me, your former team, you got to go above and beyond. And uh, Moringa doing his darndest, though it wasn't enough. So, FaZe with the first round. Some very early picks there. Cameraman getting that initial kill onto Panico. It was a very important one. It's a six pick off of the Kayid onto an alibi. Yet again, we see a basement defense. Hmm. The reluctance to bring both a Kayid and a Mute is curious from Black Dragons. Though there are a lot of things that are curious. Like, for example, did you see the mirror window in closet on an unreinforced wall? What the heck is that? That will be the mistake made this round by Black Dragons. They have reinforced the wall. That's good. Uh, they're still going to be holding into meeting, though. And it's unlikely that Black Dragons will give away a, a pick so early in the round as they had last time. Yeah, I was a bit puzzled that, you know, Panico would find himself in that dead. position, you know? Dead, essentially. But, I mean, you have an ACOG. I don't know if he was trying to peek. That... No. I think he was crossing? I mean, you, Panico is one of the most experienced players in all of Latin America. It's true. You, you're not going to make those kind of mistakes when you know that... Especially when you know that your opponents are very aggressive. Maybe. And, and FaZe can do that. Maybe he was challenging then and he just lost the fight to camera. It could have been because he did have an ACOG in his hands. He was playing on the Rook, if I remember correctly. He's on That's an true. Alibi now, so he's going to be playing likely a little bit more deceptively. Alibi's utility is likely going to go upstairs in Meeting Hall just to try and slow you down. But, I mean, you're going to be running that Alibi for the gun. You're going to be running it for the impacts. It's also possible for Alibi to be able to just keep map control by being able to rotate around in tower, upstairs in yeah. master, and then over in attic as well. And would you look at that? Rotate holes will give you clear passage through all of attic. It's being discovered by Astro. That you'll be able to find Panico or not is a pretty big question. What is Hugzord doing in the main lobby? And another easy opening frag for FaZe. Cameraman has been able to just feast upon the fact that Black Dragons are just giving them all this land. Continue to take it now as PZD pushes on up and Ion doesn't even need to move. Not, not. Just standing still. He'll claim one more life yeah. from Black Dragons. You know what, PZD, I understand you have the info, but what? Okay. I don't think that's supposed to happen. No. I so, know Disconnectologist. The round's over. So, phase two in a row on basement, and we will certainly need a rehost. So, uh, anyway, that round was going to be... Okay, phase had that round in the bag, despite the disconnects. I think we can we can say that. We said they had well, they were just getting pick after pick. They killed they killed two, then they killed Moringa, four people disconnected, and one of which was Panico. So only one person alive actually well, disconnected. No, Panico was the only one who didn't disconnect, I think, because he was on the alibi. Right, but he was still alive. Right. So what? No, no, he was still alive. There were two yeah. people alive, and then one of them disconnected. That was so alive. only only one person disconnected I think. That was actually alive. Yeah. Yes, because they killed so, Moringa right as the disconnect happened. It left you with one player left who was still alive. Yeah, so, so you got three kills. The disconnect claims one. Faze, Faze had that round. They had that round pretty pretty handily. Worth noting that a lot of teams in Latin America do live in team houses. So if you're curious as to why everybody just mysteriously disconnects at once, it's likely because something happened in the team house. Possibly power goes out. Possibly the internet falls short. This actually is what happened to Faze a couple months back. Was that there was a torrential downpour. Yeah. and storms that knocked out the power and internet in their team house, and they had to go play at another facility, if we recall correctly. Yeah, I know that there's some, not necessarily storms, but like some serious rain in Baja Tijuca right now. Baja Tijuca? I can't remember how you say it properly, but in some place in Rio, so eh, maybe that's, that's what's going on. I don't know. The infrastructure sometimes really just doesn't work in your favor, but... Um, Unable to pronounce an accent? Call me Milos! <laughs> is, he, is he anywhere around here? He would know, he would know. Is he Milos? Hello? Uh, anyway. Hello? Um, anyway, so yeah, there could be some weather issues, could be just their internet dropped, their power dropped. Speculating dropped. is only yeah. so much, right? We, we don't know. That. But either way, FaZe had that round. Yeah. And why? Because Black Dragons were giving it to them. Two people. Two people 
Ugzort up at the top of the stairs as a mirror. Not sure what he was trying to do when the front door has been shot out. You have to suspect that a minute into the round that it's very likely that you have some presence by that front door because most teams are going to try to take the top hatch or even the wall next to it before they can get the hatch. Additionally, you have a Valkyrie, a PZD playing inside a kitchen, knowing how committed Black Dragons and most teams are rather as well to a meeting hall hold. There's likely a rotate inside of the pantry and kitchen, so you just have Ion sit there and just patiently wait, holding that pixel angle. And I mean, look at that scope on the M249. It's gonna beat an MPX most of the time unless you go for a pre-fire, and I don't think PZD was fully aware of exactly where Ion was. Yeah, that, that's the thing. No, no, that's the thing, it was PZD was. That's, that's what really puzzles me, is PZD had a camera in kitchen, and that's, with that information, why did he decide to push that angle is what's really throwing me in a loop right now. It is He knew that someone was holding the angle through the metal bars in Kitchen. That's a really hard angle to win, and he slow peeks it from the angle that was being held. That's borderline throwing. It's a really bad, it's a really bad play. It's basically just giving frags to your enemy. And that's that's what we saw from Black Dragons in that second round. And I, I'm just not sure what they were thinking. I'm curious if their thought process was, let's be really aggressive to counter FaZe's aggressiveness, because you know how quickly FaZe can take map control. True. Especially on Oregon. You recall, I don't know if you do, but I recall, I believe it was Boot Camp, way, way back last season, who famously rushed three rounds in a row against FaZe and just knocked their lights out every single time. So if you can be that aggressive and possibly catch FaZe off guard, then they can tilt. They're not able to regain their footing. And you find yourself, especially on a map like Oregon, which is very good for being aggressive, you find yourself with a significant advantage. Unfortunately, having a Mira peek at the top of the stairs to the main door, maybe not your smartest idea. Maybe round number one, if the Rook was peeking, towards the spawn of phase, maybe don't have that happen either. Maybe run more three-speed operators as we saw Panico do on the Alibi and just constantly rotate and just be very difficult for you to get pinned down. Maybe that's what Black Dragons should have done. Or Black Dragons is just being significantly hurt by the lack of a smoke. Well, it seems to be a struggle so far for Black Dragons, uh, no matter how you look at it. Um, Giving away a lot of picks early on, making that anchor on the site so very difficult. Phase with just some cleanup frags to end out the round, both of those two. Black Dragons are going to have to change their strategy up quite significantly. Whether it's, you know, pacing themselves back a little bit and, you know, toning down the aggression, playing heavier on the anchor, maybe going for a mute Kai uh, juggle on the drop down, whatever the case is. Black Dragons have to adjust, because what they're doing right now is not working in the slightest. They just keep giving picks to FaZe. And this is another important fact. FaZe are just winning their gunfights. Yes. Like, period, well, FaZe are winning their gunfights. How, I mean, how are you going to lose gunfights when your opponents just seem to be hell-bent on taking every single one with minimal information, right? So... Well, I mean, th that's the thing. Some of the, like, okay, that push from PZD, he had information on Kitchen. Right? He saw the Capital on his camera in Kitchen. He just lost the fight. Perfect. So, while all of Black Dragons get themselves set back up, we're going to throw to a very short break, and then we'll be back with the rest of this matchup. Two rounds in. Two seems to be the theme of the day. Yay! we got two rounds under our belt. We'll hopefully get some more very shortly. Here's a break for you.
Thanks for your patience. We're back with our third match. We got two rounds in. Phase one, both of them. Yeah, pretty one-sidedly. Like, really one-sidedly so far. Very much so. Yeah. Very quick rounds as well. Came down to the wire for Moringa in round number one, but the setup was pretty fast. Second round, until the internet fell out. Hmm. For Black Dragons, or their power went out, or whichever. Oh, it was the internet. All them. Was internet the fell. Yeah. You're a technician now. No, I just... Oh, you're somebody. a technician. It's too late. Everybody believes it. Oh. Anyway, so you look at this match in particular. We're on Oregon. Crazy things happen. Phase of one, both of their attacks on Laundry Supply Room downstairs. Round three, have to suspect that at this point, Black Dragons will likely go up to kids' dorms because you're not going to go with Laundry again. The problem with Black Dragons is that they've spent two rounds defending the site that they probably should be winning, yeah. or at least coming close to winning. Nope. They're throwing away lots of opportunities. If they can't win Laundry Supply Room, that means at best, knowing that there's only four rounds remaining, they're only going to take dorms twice. That puts them in really bad shape, because that means that unless they go back down to Laundry Supply Room, they're going to have to try to run either Kitchen or Tower, which is doable. But the fact that they haven't prevailed on Laundry twice doesn't bode well for their chances, through the rest of this matchup. Yeah, it really doesn't. Um, I, you've got to be able to win it consistently basement and top floor if you want to have real chance of coming in positive on your defensive half of Oregon. But uh, with two really unsuccessful basement defenses, so far it's looking bad for BD. They're going to have to make up for it on their attacking half if they want to have a chance here. But... They'll be going to top floor for the next round, and that makes sense given the fact that bottom floor has been such a disaster for Black Dragons. And, uh, well, that's interesting. Six pick off of the mirror onto a Kaid. So, no, no, no Kaid being brought on the basement, but they're gonna bring him on top floor. I'm guessing they're just gonna try to use those uh, electro claws to deny the closet from a distance. Maybe. You know, top of white stairs. It's a pretty awesome thing you can do because bandit tricking generator? Big no. Why? Because there's a window that looks completely exposing you. Playing at the top of white with Kaid and then electro clawing the wall? Oh, yeah, sure, why not? You could also possibly stick Kaid in B and have him throw the electro claw onto the wall or at least try to jiggle yeah. out, but it might yeah. expose him to that window, as you mentioned. So that's something to keep in mind. You got options. All. You do have options, and that's the big thing, right? Interesting to note for FaZe is that they have been quite consistent at running a Finca in a lot of their maps and a lot of their setups. They didn't like the Finca previously because of the lesion that was on the board. Of course, the moment that you hit a goo mine, it immediately stops her effect. This was more important when it used to be 20 seconds for her adrenal surge. Now it's only 10 seconds, so hitting a goo mine doesn't waste actually that much time. But there's no lesion on the board, so FaZe is actually going to stick with it. Instead of keeping the Capitao and Ion's hands, they moved them to Mav. You know what's interesting about uh, Finca is that it is a tool of coordination. Oh, wow. Uh, that's, again, again. That is through the north windows, ladies and gentlemen. The again. north windows in sight. Astro will take down BDN. And, I mean, he was just repelling on tower. Nice shot called out by GDN. That's, you know, credit where credit is due. And this is not going to be good for Astro, though, as he gets down by Panico, though saved by Yuna! Oh, no! The C4, though, from PZD will finish off Astro, so it's not all over for Black Dragons, though this has been a costly roam so far, and Astro has really worked out on that Ash play in this round. Now... I was just trying to say, something that's interesting about Finca is that she, in a way, is information coordination for the attacking team, in that once the Finca charge is detonated, you know, oh, this is when everything is happening. If you want to coordinate an attack, having a Finca be like, call the uh, actual push in unison, I mean, it's just a way to make sure everyone on the attack is aware. We're going now. This is a little fun fact about her. That's what we're here for, Michael. Fun facts. The fun facts. This is the fun facts stream of Siege. That is correct. Mm -hmm. You've got the Valkyrie playing downstairs, just by the dining hall. That'll be just to be able to lob a C4 up, maybe with some plant denial. And the PZD's already expended that nitro cell, as you noted. So you've now got the Valkyrie having to get back to site after controlling that bottom floor. It doesn't appear that FaZe is particularly interested in droning it out. PZD possibly to go through that dining hall, but instead one other member of Black Dragons will be taken out of action. You're gonna have to hurry, but both bodies of Black Dragons are now very firmly off-site. Depending on the drone economy that we see on the side of phase, this could go bad. 
for Black Dragons, who are, at the moment, waiting to see if the Valkyrie is going to peek out of Dining Hall. There's one body. We'll light her up. Go for the second. Grab them both. And PZD will be able oh, to get no. back in. But... I think their internet just crashed again. You hate to see it. Yeah, it's the internet, for sure. A running man. Or in the case of Valkyrie, the running woman. That'll be a victory for FaZe as two members of Black Dragons will once again find themselves either losing power or the internet or something. That's so anticlimactic. After the two-piece from PZD, Black Dragons just brought themselves, they bootstrapped themselves back into that round. PZD individually. Great effort. Uh, and now the round's over. And it, okay, so technically by the rules, I think it should be a phase round. Of course, we'll wait for admin decision, but there's, there's, I mean, that's a phase round. So that's, that's a 3-0 right now looking like for fight, uh, for phase clan and what looked like the closest round for Black Dragons. Again, the way that that crash happened, I could tell you from experience, that's, that's the internet. Uh, crashing out there. It's it's a timeout there. You could tell because they're just walking in place. So we'll find out exact clarification later on. But it looks like uh, right now Black Dragon's team house is having internet issues. And there's only four of them in there right now, but four is enough to end the match. I mean, Panico's a great player, but 1v5ing? Uh, probably not Panico's wheelhouse. No. No. Nor anyone's really, for that matter. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's absolutely true. Unfortunately for them on kids' dorms, you have yourself a position where you could have possibly tried to fend off the remaining members of FaZe. Bigger problem with Black Dragons. And I probably would have still given that round to Black Dragons because you have the Jaeger playing off-site. He was down in Meeting Hall. He's trying to climb up the ladder back into Attic. You had Valkyrie inside of Dining Hall with no C4. You know how difficult it is to retake dorms when you lose control. So even though it would have been a 2v2, you have one body, the Finca, on repel, on Kid Storms, can go on in. Might still have a frag grenade left, you don't know. Where's the diffuser to? That's the other question. Uh, amidst the, the frenzy that happened outside of Dining Hall, I didn't catch up the diffuser, got dropped. And that's something you need to keep in mind too, because if that forces a rotate, then that's a huge victory for Black Dragons and gives them the time to get back to site. That's the big issue. That pick, those two picks also were really big for a number of other reasons too, because PZD got the only two players pressuring those north windows, right? FaZe did not have another avenue into sight. They weren't pushing from anywhere else. They could have potentially gone into attic to main hall and then hit sight from there, but that's a bottleneck and a half. And what's also important to note is that PZD, I believe he still had his C4 in hand, so he could have denied from below. No, nope, already he'd used, used it. He'd used his C4 very early, actually. In that case, he still could have denied the windows from the murder holes that were already opened up. So yeah. there was a lot of options available to PZD in that round, playing from below. Either that, or he could have just pushed up white stairs, because that was still available to him, regained those anchor positions, and then still, FaZe has to rotate, because those last two FaZe players, they were just, well, nowhere near north windows, nowhere near the site. It was the flank watchers. So, yeah, that was, that was potentially a really winnable round. Black Dragons. Uh, more winnable than their first two. More winnable than their first two. FaZe could have brought it back, and honestly... I, I still think that would have been FaZe's round, just because there was zero sight control, and I mean, you don't have a C4. You have the Valkyrie in a position where if the swing-in happens from the Finca... Right. But it was it was the closest it got. Apparently, yes. it was a power outage. Uh, so, yeah. We'll see what happens with, uh, with Black Dragons, but right now they are without power. And we're going to go to another break until their power is restored. So sit tight, and we'll uh, we'll see if we can get more than another round here before uh, we get back into the action in just a couple minutes.
Stylish on the outside. Savage on the inside. Legion by Lenovo. Welcome back, everybody, to the second half, third half of our third match of the day. There you go. I think I stuck the landing. I don't know. Yeah. Go home. There'll go be with a, that. There'll be a Twitter poll. You decide. So we've got still technical issues, mm -hmm. and we're trying to work through them to the best well, of our ability. Black Dragons is having technical issues. Yeah, they specifically are having technical issues. Four of them, I, 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 all but Penico, and uh, they have no power right now, so they can't play video games. You need any power to do that so well i mean without power they can't do a lot of things yeah actually the lights won't turn on and you're you can't charge your phone can't charge your phone it's true i'm assuming that the phones probably have a decent charge hopefully they're not one of those i can't get more they're not those people who keep their phones at like 10 percent all day people do that what people do that you ever see you ever see like that joke where it's like somebody will this always happens i feel like this is every single screenshot somebody will you know somebody will say you know Oh, here's a screenshot. Take a look at it. And then the first thing you're like, charge your phones at 7%. Yeah. So I uh, just got a little birdie in my ear telling me that apparently it's a forfeit. So that's it. Black Dragons lose. Unfortunate, though it is an interesting turn of events for FaZe, who suffered this exact misfortune. That's true. So it's a bit of karma for FaZe, actually. In a very, in a very almost sadistic kind of sense. Earlier this season in a matchup against Liquid that had possible playoff implications, FaZe was unable to compete after a number of re-hosts eventually prompted a forfeit that was doled out by the admins, giving Liquid the victory over FaZe. Mm. It has now been that victory, that matchup has now actually been swung back in their favor because of this. It's very unfortunate timing for Black Dragons because Black Dragons entered the day with 17 points. They were looking to try and make a push for the playoffs. This now means that with Immortals getting one point today, they sit at 24 points. A victory for FaZe puts them at 24 points with Black Dragons at 17 points. Their ceiling is 23 points. And with that, Black Dragons is no longer able to qualify for the Milan Finals. It was always a long shot because they would have need to basically not just go perfect, but also rely on quite a bit of luck. Yeah. Very similar very similar to what Space Station is in in North America, very similar to what G2 is in in Europe. So it wasn't a given, but that ends their run. They still have six points remaining. It will now boost both FaZe and Immortals up to a tie in first place. Now, because Immortals has that tiebreaker, they will sit in first overall. But we still have one more match to play. It's going to be Ninjas in Pajamas versus Red Devils. Playoff implications as well for Ninjas in Pajamas as they sit outside looking in. They're going to need a victory today, given the fact that points went up for both Immortals and FaZe. But we're going to throw to a very quick break, and we'll be back with our final matchup of the day.